Let's take a look at this article here right here on the one-year inflation, one-year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. So let's take a look at what gas prices were last year versus this year. Okay? So uh, Stephanie Myers puts out this tweet that in spite of inflation being down, so the word right now is last year this administration put together the Inflation Reduction Act. A year later, we're much better. Are we really? This is what inflation was last year, June and July of last year. So it's soaring inflation. If you go back to 2021, 7%, 8%, 6%. October 2021, 6%, 6%, 7%, 7.5%, 79.85, 83, 86%, 91% in June of 2022, July 2022. Now, here's what they're reporting today. One year anniversary to combat inflation, the rise in cost of goods, services, and just basically living. Well, they're saying that all items are down to 3.2%. <laughs> so we went from 9, 8, 9% down to 3.2% one year later. My question to you, is your food prices going down? Because according to here, food price went back, went back down uh, 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 to 3.6%. Energy went down negative 20%. Is your, ga- is your electric bill cheaper? Is your gas bill cheaper? Let me ask you, uh, your purchase of vehicles cheaper this year than it was last year? I don't know. Educate us on your neighborhood. Because I've asked this question for the last two months. Has your cost of living gone down? Because this administration is saying we're 9% last year, and based on this act, the Inflation Reduction Act, we're now at 3.2%. But what's the reality? People are still in the same financial predicament, and things are still costing more money. I don't know. Have you experienced things going down? Airfare going down? Gas prices going down, your energy prices going down, your rent going down. Huh. There's two things I miss: gas in the late '90s when it was a dollar and twelve cents, dollar twelve cents, a dollar nine. Miss those times. Um, as far as airfare, those COVID prices, you can fly across the nation for like thirty dollars. Chef's kiss. Yes. Um, but no, no. I, I travel a week, and you know, I travel every single week, and. Um, when I started traveling a lot more in, in uh, 2020, 2021, I was still I was like, okay, I, I, I'm, I, there's a big gap between the profit I'm making versus how much I'm spending. But right now, as the months have gone by and the years have gone by, that margin is starting to shrink. Because of the airfare. Because of the airfare is starting to shrink, 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 shrink. And it's also, I think, because you forced me to uh, upgrade from <laughs> Flying Spirit <laughs> to American and United. But e- even then, even even then, man, uh, it, I, I do notice the the difference in, in that. And now that we I, I have a house, the differences between renting yeah. a, an apartment to yeah. having an actual household where you have to pay for all the utili- utilities, and now it's a slap in the face. Um, but definitely everyone who has a house who are, uh, of my friend's circle who have multiple properties to rent them out, they're getting hit really hard. So yeah. now, while that contract that they have with the people who are taking up their properties, now it's like, dude, I, I'm, I'm nervous of uh, this next month because our, the lease is coming to an end and I'm going to have yeah. to break it to them, then I'm going to uh-huh. have to raise the rent because now I'm starting to break even and I'm not trying to break even, I'm trying to make profit off of this. So uh, all of my friends who are involved in the real estate aspect or who are trust- renting out to different people, they're, they're definitely feeling the effect. If there's a lot of scams out there, this is one of the scams. There's a, what we feel is a college scam. We did interview Charlie Kirk last week, man, uh, a founder of the Turning Point USA. So he was in our stage last week. Interviewed him in front of ten thousand people, and he's got a book out there called The College Scam. So the college pursuit of a piece of paper has been a scam for a lot of people. That people look and have this esteem on a college degree more than they need to. Now I get it if you're a surgeon. Yeah, you know, get if you're a lawyer, get lawyer. It, right. You bet you better go to college. Makes sense. Yeah. But if you would just want to get a degree, for example, he says he has asked one of the kids at college, "What are you studying?" He goes, "Entrepreneurship." He's like, "Dude, you don't study entrepreneurship. You do entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, you s- associate with entrepreneurs. You don't go from a college professor who's never been, been an entrepreneur before, who's just talking from podium from theory, who's never been an entrepreneur before, and so I've never got a college degree. You never got a college degree. Patrick never got a, Patrick David never got a college degree. Charlie Kirk never got a college degree. Interesting how those four names, they're doing fairly well in our lives at different stages in our lives, are doing fairly well without a college degree or without student loan debt. And so what they try to tell you on is, hey, you know, the people that make a lot of money are the are the folks that have a college degree. Yeah. Okay. 
So, I don't know, that's arguable today because what do we see in our conferences? We, we just came back from a conference a couple weeks ago. We had people there with master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, PhDs, multiple degrees, comma, uh, comma alphabet soup after the last name, and where are they finding S success and happiness in entrepreneurship. Yeah. And so, right now, if you are getting hit with inflation, and there's no help in sight. I mean, this administration just put an act in place to help you out. One year later, guess what? There's not a lot of help really in reality of American lives. And so if you want to say, okay, that's a college scam, what's the next scam, Matt? I believe taxes are a scam. Taxes only started in 1911, 1912. I believe also inflation is a scam. So there's a lot of scams out there that you have to avoid. And so if you want to avoid and minimize the tax scam and minimize and avoid the inflation scam, our answer to that has been capitalism, has been entrepreneurship, has been free enterprise. No other economic system that we could have depended on allowed us the economic mobility to go from broke to balling, from poor to making money, making ends meet. I mean, Milton, I know you're, you're, you're frugal and there's some mindful expenses too as well, but have you really worried about airfare? I mean, have you really worried about putting gas in your truck, that monster you drive around with that makes a lot of noise two miles in advance before you even know you're there? Do you even really worry about it or do you just focus on what you can control, which is making more money, which offsets the cost of inflation, goods and services? The last time I sat and I worried about how am I going to pay rent? How am I going to pay X, Y, Z items? How am I going to get from point A to point B travel-wise across the nation, wherever the case may be, was probably during the pandemic. That was, that was the last time that I had to worry. But whenever I do start feeling a little bit of the heat of, wow, things are starting to stack up expense-wise, the only thing I, the only thing that comes to my mind is like, all right, great. How can I make more money this week? Great. How can I give myself a raise today? Great. Mm -hmm. What more can I do or what more do I need to do today? Not tomorrow, not the next week, not next year, but today to make more money. And now obviously having mm -hmm. the systems already in place, knowing what to do, who mm -hmm. to reach out to, how to work the system. I give myself a nice little raise every other day whenever I feel like I need it and any extra income that I have. Pour it back into the business because, of course, pouring back into your business, it's what's going to help mm -hmm. you grow your business within itself. That's right. You're investing in a machine yeah. that's creating a lifestyle that you're in 100%. So that's me, why people come out to events. So let me ask you, and and this is knowing from uh, being around a lot of the younger generation, uh, 18 to uh, let's say 25, 24, why is it that the younger generation, in your eyes, has a hard knock on the idea of capitalism? Why do so many people despise it? Why do they look frown upon it? Why, ha why do they knock it down so heavily? And it, it seems to be a mass majority of that population. It seems to be, the, the what is it, Gen Z's? The mm -hmm. younger generation. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think that is? Just like we just came back from Las Vegas. <clears throat> the lure of getting something for nothing is so strong. Why? Because our natural disposition as human beings is to be lazy. Yeah. You know that. You're a trainer. Yeah. People, oh my gosh. By the way, today I'm limping in because you just, Hey, man, a killer leg day on Monday. I'm limping in. Yeah. A lot of people limping in in pain are like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give up the gym for a week or two. You know what I'm thinking about today? I need to hydrate because I see Milton later on tonight. Correct. At the gym. Yep. You know, so it's easier for us to quit on something because it's hard. And for a lot of people, if you don't think through it, okay, hey, I'm 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm new in this world. I like free stuff. Who wouldn't like free stuff? I like free stuff. Yeah. Okay. But now you start making some money. You're starting to make a, a business decision, financial decision, family decision. Now you're married and you got kids. You start getting your gross pay and your net pay, and there's a big disparity between what you were supposed to get paid versus what you actually get paid because they start increasing what they take on taxes because who's going to pay for all this free stuff, yeah. which is a case for the government to raise income taxes across the board. And by the way, our, our state where we're from, guess what they just raised, uh, raised taxes on? It wasn't income tax, property tax. The west side of Chicago, you know the west side of Chicago, mm -hmm. has the largest increase of property tax in the city of Chicago. Shit. And by the way, that's the hood. Austin District, that's the, you know that. Everybody from Chicago knows the west side is the hood. That's Chirac. South side, Chirac. So why are they raising property taxes in the most poor neighborhood of Chicago? They're trying to push people out, man. Exactly. They're pushing people out because they know they can't afford the property tax. They're sure. kicking people out through income taxes, property taxes, to gentrify the neighborhood. Like they did, like they did uh, Humble Park. Right? Pilsen. You, Pilsen, right? We used to call it Humble Park, Humble Heights. Yeah. Because the gentrification of the neighborhood. So 
why are we allowing other people to come into our neighborhoods that understand that understood entrepreneurship and capitalism works? And yet those same neighborhoods that we're getting kicked out, we're depending on who? The government. Same thing was going on in Maui, and I don't want to go much too off on a tangent, but the whole conspiracy right now was going on with Maui, the burning areas of Lahaina. And by the way, we were there a couple years ago. Remember we went to Hawaii a couple years ago. We yeah. went to Maui, we went to Lahaina, we went to, I love Maui. I took uh, a Ruben out there when it was, uh, we turned 13 years old, and that's where I taught him how to talk to girls in a very respectful manner. Yeah. Kid, you're 13 years old, let me teach you how to talk to girls. Let me, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to Lahaina. And the oddest thing too as well, the whole city burned. The only thing that didn't burn, bro, was the church. The church is standing strong. There's some pictures out there. It's crazy. We'll post it on Instagram later on. But the only thing that hasn't burned down was the church. And that was the epicenter and the center of the Hawaiian kingdom. Why? Because the indigenous folks there don't want to sell the land to the millionaires and billionaires and investors that want to own that land. So there's a lot of conspiracy. Obviously, you got the research. Don't take my word for it. But take, take a look at what's going on there in, in Maui. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.